There isn't a being alive who hasn't at least wondered what it would be like to have a superhuman ability, even in its most minute form. Whether it be the ability to fly, run fast, or just be strong enough to accomplish a task that you're currently undertaking, the varying possibilities that led to the fantasy that we've all shared at one point or another is eternal. In a world very similar to our own, this fantasy has become a very real reality. Project Power shows us a world, at least a brief look at one, where your wildest dreams can become true, but with big dreams comes even bigger nightmares. What's up nerd and nerdettes? Welcome to 50 Shades of Shay, your superpower super index. I'm Shay, and I'm here to sink my teeth into the shoulder of this new Netflix original show, Project Power. Now I wanna make this clear. This isn't a movie review. <laughs> I don't do those. I'm here for one reason and one reason only, to prove how important secondary superpowers are in the world of Project Power. So in fact, I'll give the writers credit for the manner in which these abilities were depicted. But before I go any further, there's no way that I can get down and dirty with this if I don't put out a disclaimer. There will be spoilers ahead. I'm sorry. If you haven't watched the movie or don't want it to be spoiled, don't proceed any further. Now, with that out the way, the story begins in New Orleans. You know, your stereotypical drug deal meetup where numerous dealers gather around a mysterious distributor who's backed by an even more mysterious organization, this representative offers a free supply of power, a pill that works more like a capsule, but if ingested grants unpredictable superpowers for about five minutes. Among these dealers is a man named Newt, you know, like the lizard or the salamander. You, you see the metaphors and the symbolisms, all right? Anyway, remember him because we'll be getting back to this guy. Apparently, the goal of this organization, dubbed Telios, is to launch Project Power, a program to create, well, superpowers, so they can in turn profit off of it. But like all great things, this pill has more than its fair share of rules and nasty side effects. One being that not everyone who consumes a pill gains powers. That's a fact that we're told about and later shown on screen. The second is that the taker of the pill gains an ability that's more or less personality or character base, meaning that the user will always get the same power when they take a pill. And third is that these powers have a time limit, ranging from an instant burst of power to around five minutes or longer, depending on which power that the person gets. Remember Newt who we talked about earlier? Just like his namesake, when the slimy drug peddler takes a pill, he takes the form of fire. More specifically, he produces flames that cover and coat his entire body, now here's perhaps one of the most interesting aspects of this movie in terms of superpower portrayal. Straight off the bat, we're showing that this guy in all his flashy, flamey fury is in trouble right out the gate. The movie does a great job of showing you without telling you that this guy does not have the total package when it comes to fire manipulation. And in fact, this power doesn't really benefit him. His skin blackens and burns along with the rest of his clothing. It's so bad in some cases that it really becomes hard to look at and it's pretty terrifying. But this shows us immediately that he lacks any kind of secondary superpower that would mitigate this damage, such as fire immunity or form of fire resistance. But it doesn't stop there. It's shown in great detail that he cannot control any outside source of flame, even those he creates himself. Because during his fight with the Major, a character we'll get to later, the apartment complex around them burns. And Newt, whether he's in his right mind or not, we don't know, he's strung out on drugs, shows no intent to stop or even control the fire in a way that can make the fight easier by trapping the Major or minimizing the damage to his home. Our next example is Frank Shaver, a New Orleans police cop whose power increases his durability. The greatest extent of his power allows him to survive a gunshot to the face and punch a hole in concrete, suffering little to no pain afterwards. Impressive abilities on their own, but unfortunately, enhanced strength wasn't included in his load. This is demonstrated as other pill takers who Frank has gone up against throughout the movie have overpowered him. And that makes sense. It doesn't matter how tough or durable you are if you can't use your durability effectively. I mean, durability doesn't make you stronger, you're just tougher. Which explains how he was able to punch a hole in concrete without injuring himself, but at the same time had trouble restraining a henchman towards the end of the movie whose power allowed him to dislocate his joints and bones. I mean, 
Think about it like this. It's like trying to hammer down a nail with a metal hammer versus a plastic one. Your strength is still the same, but it's supplemented by the durability of the hammer. And that's one of the things that you see in popular culture that doesn't really get explained. Most superpowered characters get enhanced strength and durability all in one. And oftentimes it's hard to distinguish the two from each other. But that lack of super strength leads us to our next great example. Who could be thought of as a, uh, I guess, inverse to Frank? Wallace. Wallace is a higher ranked henchman of Telios, but has the most simple power of all, enhanced strength. So much so that he's able to single-handedly punch a metal door that had to be at least a foot thick off its hinges. But within that cool moment, we see the limits of his ability as he's already sporting bloody knuckles and a frustrated demeanor from having to take that door down. This is later cemented but during a confrontation with the Major and Frank Shaver, instead of a big knocked down, dragged out fight, a shotgun to the chest is more than enough to put Wallace down. Which goes to further my point. He obviously only had super strength and not enhanced durability, the inverse to what Frank had. And that cost him his life. Moving on with another major player in the movie, the distributor himself, Biggie, who lives up to his name magnificently. His ability transforms him into a massive Hulk-like creature that possesses enhanced size, strength, and durability, allowing him to tank several gunshots while transforming and remaining unfazed throughout. It appears he has a nice little lineup of powers, right? Except one thing. It's shown he's left heavily scarred after transformations and it appears he doesn't have anything resembling a healing factor like this pill popper right here does. That would make an ability like this completely horrifying to use, as any injury you sustain while transform will still remain afterwards. Something we see when he's caught in an explosion. He had neither the resistance nor the regeneration to withstand anything like that, and ended up in pieces. In the same scene, we're shown an even worse example in the form of a woman named Candy, who, based on Biggie, sports thermal regulation, or simply temperature regulation. You know, the ability to control temperatures. But hers takes a turn for the absolute worse. You see, based on the information we're given, she can only lower temperatures and shows no conscious control over this ability because it's dependent on the temperature of the surrounding area. This is the reason why Biggie, who I mentioned previously, had to keep her inside of a temperature controlled environment. But we ultimately saw the worst this ability had to offer during a conflict between the Major and Biggie when she ended up freezing to death because the temperature got too low. All she needed to counteract something like this from happening would have simply been thermal manipulation or even cold immunity. I hope you guys are seeing a theme or a pattern when it comes to these abilities shown. Most if not all the characters in this movie have abilities that cannot be used to their full potential because they lack the essential secondary superpowers needed to make them effective. There's no point to summoning fire if you get burned like everyone else. There's no point to being inhumanly strong if you break yourself in the process or even being immensely durable but not having the strength to defend yourself. You're just a really responsive punching bag at that point. But no power represents this theme better than the main character Art, or as I referred to him earlier as the Major. Now don't get me wrong, the Major has an amazing ability based off real world creatures called the Pistol Shrimp, which is a shrimp that's able to fire off bubbles underwater at such a speed they can reach temperatures of like, what is it, 8,000 degrees Fahrenheit? That's around the temperature of the sun or something like that. But anyway, the drawback to this wildly devastating power is that Art shows to have very little to no finesse. And it seems to take a lot out of him, to the point to where he needs to be revived by his daughter, who seems to have her own sets of powers organically and suffers none of the drawbacks the other users do. It's not stated why this power does this to him, but one could surmise the simplistic answer of human limitation. And that's what it all comes down to. Project Power is as grounded as one can get when it comes to displaying superpowers. And they do this in a way that explains itself decently. I mean, using survival techniques of animals as a base to base their powers off of. But it seems to beg the question, if there was a possibility to gain superpowers, would you even want them? And if there was a perfect power for you that fit your personality and the only thing holding you back from unleashing its full potential was you, would you even need them? Appreciate you guys watching. You guys like what I do? Show your superpower support. Hit that like and subscribe button. Because remember, they have one.
at the CIA. Deuces.